After a year of ups, downs, and everything in betweens, it's that time where we can bask in the glory of shared recommendations. Because although we're very much clamoring for new worthwhile titles, the reality of Game Pass, scattered team sizes, and Zoom call marketing plans can leave some of the finest games of 2021 just sitting, waiting for you to put in the legwork and seek them out. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 11 best 2021 video games you didn't play. Also, please check out our video from the midpoint of 2021 for even more awesome recommendations from the first half of the year. Number 11, Guardians of the Galaxy. No one in the world will believe how good Guardians of the Galaxy really is. Coming in the wake of the disastrous Avengers game featuring more knockoff looking versions of recognizable Hollywood talent, it just felt doomed to fail. Thankfully, the reality of this is entirely Eidos's bread and butter. Guardians of the Galaxy is a deus ex, a mass effect, something where you'll spend hours just talking to your crew, having surprisingly deep emotional conversations about their history and the lore of the universe itself. It is a categorical failure of marketing that none of this came through before launch, though it is worth pointing out that all the awesomely chunky 80s hit scored combat is still great. Surprising in every respect, Guardians is a confident package with a through-line vision executed on from start to finish. It's everything the Avengers was not, free from corporate interference like microtransactions or elongated grindy gameplay loops, comfortably sitting alongside Insomniac Spider-Man titles instead. Number 10, Dodgeball Academia. Between this and Knockout City, 2021 was the year of the dodgeball and the time loop, but I'll get to that in a minute. Point being, Pocket Trap's Dodgeball Academia, a game a fraction of the populace who played it even got through looking at achievement data, is one of the shiniest gems you can uncover on Game Pass. Giving you real-time dodgeball slapping combat with charge throws, catches, special moves, and counters, think classic RPG, but where combat is mashing enemies' faces in with flaming dodgeballs. This was something I blitzed every night until it was done. Just an immaculately polished game filled with charming, funny writing. A gorgeous presentation letting you explore campus and some small surrounding areas, and that addictive as hell sports combat gluing it all together. Number 9, Kena Bridge of Spirits. The forgotten PlayStation exclusive, outside of Destruction All-Stars anyway, Kena is the debut title from Animation House Emberlar, though that did result in some delays and a marketing campaign that kicked in all too late. The result though is a game I practically devoured in one sitting, playing like a love letter to PlayStation 2 platformers, and having more than a little Jack and Daxter in its double jump feel and environment layouts. What really elevates the experience and makes it modern though is a supremely tight combat system, encouraging combination of bomb placement on enemies for specific detonations, slow motion weak spot targeting, and occasional melee finishes or group clearing moves. Again, this is a team's first video game, filled with a surprisingly effective comment on the fleeting beauty of life itself. Here's to an entire Kena franchise because this is one hell of a first step. Number 8, Monomals. Monomals is the coolest idea for a video game, I don't know, ever. One part super slick platformer where you play as a headphone jack being cast into pools full of music notes, and one part actual music software, where notes represent one set of lead, bass, or drum sound effects each. Play as a synthwave aesthetic rabbit and the monomals you catch will be 80s style synthesizers. Play as a jazzy frog and you're hoovering up brass instruments and more laid back drums. Platforming is sublime as hell, with a charge move taking out foes and every other level transforming forms you into a jetpack, rolling ball, or handful of other modifiers. The composition side of things lets you share tracks with others and vote on the best music the community is assembling. It's just the best of both these ideas meshed in a way I never knew I needed. Number 7, The Artful Escape. Between this and 12 minutes, film studio Annapurna are continuing to make one hell of a mark on the gaming industry. Creating the most indie of indie titles conceptually, Artful Escape also has a ludicrously stacked voice cast, comprising Lena Headey, Mark Strong, and Carl Weathers, the latter playing an intergalactic retiring rock star, dropping down to planet Earth with an alien friend to take your character Francis on the tour of his life. Brilliantly, that's all this game wants to be. A ludicrously gorgeous fly-through of kaleidoscopic Asimovian visuals, complete with light platforming and a button you can hold down to rip a guitar solo for as long as you want. Story-wise, it's about the importance of freewheeling rock expression in a world of shoegazing folk tunes. And by journey's end, it's a sequence of locations and events you'll never forget. 
Number 6, Cyber Shadow. The first title published by Shovel Knight developers Yacht Club after that immaculate body of work finally wrapped up, Cyber Shadow is crafted by one-man dev team on Mecha Skull Hunziker, under the express purpose of being a brutally difficult side-scrolling action platformer in the vein of Ninja Gaiden. You can almost guess exactly what this is from that description, and you'd largely be right. But Cyber Shadow quickly fleshes itself out into your main character, unlocking a slew of Mega Man-esque upgrades per boss battle. Alongside are items you can equip per checkpoint, and a neat currency system pays off the more you revisit areas, giving you better gear when rerunning the most challenging gauntlets. With a dark synth soundtrack rumbling away as this Terminator-infused cyberpunk world unfills behind you, Cyber Shadow might be too hard for the majority, but for those it clicks with, there's not much this passionately crafted across all of 2021. Number 5, Sable. Speaking of passionately crafted, Shedwork's Sable is a stunningly unique open-world puzzle game with zero combat, centered on Sable herself going off on a pilgrimage to find purpose, before returning with whatever knowledge and information you can find. It's intentionally vague to reference the various pilgrimages many real-world religions can offer, and in a neat touch lets you decide when you've seen and learned enough, returning to your tribe voluntarily to finish the game. Stay out amongst the dunes though and you'll find tens of hours of environmental puzzles, ancient ruins to explore, and parts for your glider, making it faster and more capable to get you even further away from home. Most importantly though, you'll need to be gifted a mask from one of the many factions and belief systems you can interact with, showing you respect another group's way of life and may want to represent it yourself. A truly beautiful, playable version of what it means to come from a certain background filled with coming-of-age expectations, you should absolutely get lost in Sable yourself and just see what you can find. Number 4, My Friend Pedro, Ripe for Revenge. I think I've recommended, I don't know, maybe one mobile game in my entire eight years at What Culture. That game was Pokemon Go, but My Friend Pedro deserves to be up there as a must play too, as developers Dead Toes took the snappy slow motion delights of the regular edition and made them work perfectly on the go. Giving you snappy tight levels with lots of sight lines, but still enough room to maneuver, you'll be back flipping off walls, rolling under bullets, firing shots into explosives, and all round pirouetting through the air with twin pistols constantly. Though there is a free version, I'd heartily recommend dropping the three pounds to remove all ads and just get lost in some of the slickest, purest action available. Both this minimized take and the original My Friend Pedro are gloriously self-aware bullet ballets with skateboard stunts, motorbike sections, trick kills, and submachine guns in equal measure. Mobile games are truly one in a million, and this is that one. Number 3, Hot Wheels Unleashed. Not a single soul expected the latest Hot Wheels game to be anything other than completely forgettable outside the hardcore fanbase. But oh how wrong that assumption was. Hot Wheels Unleashed is nothing less than an essential arcade racer, up there with burnout and inertial drift. A superbly balanced physics dependent game with a set of unlockables for the ages, hurtling around sidewinding courses as Back to the Future's DeLorean, Batman's Batmobile, or just a Hot Wheels burger van whenever you want. Besides looking stunning and featuring some light like renders of the cars themselves, replete with paint flecks and grime as a race plays out, Hot Wheels track designer is also something else. Placed inside a bizarrely fleshed out basement you can unlock arcade cabinets and furniture for, here you can literally make any track you put your mind to. Taken as a full package, and again none of this would work without expert handling at the core, Hot Wheels Unleashed is the best thing to bear its franchise name outside the collectibles themselves. Number 2, Ruined King, a League of Legends story. Riot Games really know what they're doing right now. With Netflix's Arcane being a Game of Thronesian delight with meaty as hell fight scenes and incredible characters, alongside is Ruined King, a long delayed turn based RPG from Darksiders Genesis and Battle Chasers Nightwar developer Airship Syndicate. That developer means legendary artist Joe Madarera has been given the keys to Runeterra, and besides phenomenal character designs, is a combat system with surprising depth. Taking the Final Fantasy X slash Octopath Traveler route of letting you manage and mess with an entire timeline of attacks, it lets you plan for windows of opportunity, ultimates, party combos, and everything else. Story-wise too, for someone who knows nothing about League of Legends lore, this feels like its own Final Fantasy-sized adventure with great party chemistry and awesome intriguing characters. Joe Madarera and the world of Runeterra are a match made in heaven. And number 1, The Forgotten City. Sometimes you just have to do it yourself. And though it feels like a Herculean task, developers modern storyteller, largely helmed by one Nick Pierce, took a Skyrim mod and slowly transformed it into an entire game. The Forgotten City then is nothing less than masterful. Its movement and interactions very much have that Bethesda DNA, but it only serves to remind you of what a top tier polished first person RPG experience can still feel like. Atop that is everything Pierce and his team have made their own, in particular making the entire 
entire game as an intricate time loop mystery. With your custom designed protagonist dropping from the modern day into this ancient Roman city nestled amongst a cave system, everyone here seems to obey the golden rule. A stipulation that states the entire populace will perish if any one person commits a sin. Obviously, you'll then do that over and over, restarting the timeline but always with new information, exploring more and more before resetting and seeing what else you can change. Politicians wanting you to sway voters, long lost family troubles you can put to rest, the Forgotten City is a near super heroic feat of coding from such a tiny team and one of the best written games of the modern era. And those are my picks for 11 of the best 2021 video games you didn't play. Let me know your own favorites down in the comments below. And don't worry, I didn't forget about Scarlet Nexus. It's just included in the other video I made earlier this year. For now, though, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please subscribe to the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast, and I'll catch you soon.